Former CIA Director John Brennan on the Hill today as the Biden family's business dealings are under fire. House Republicans alleging the agency may have assisted in obtaining signatories for a letter discrediting Hunter Biden's laptop. Cover the New York Post today saying it pays to be a Biden. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer revealing just how the Bidens made millions off of shady foreign deals. Listen. We're going to uh, demand that the Biden family uh, provide invoices or, or thing, uh, evidence that they actually did provide services or sell something or manufacture or do something like a normal business to receive that money. If they can't do that, then obviously all eyes are on Joe Biden because why else would uh, foreign nationals be wiring money to his nieces, nephews and, and grandchild uh, were it not for things that Joe Biden was doing that would provide a return on the investment. Joining us now to discuss is Republican Florida Congressman Byron Donalds. Congressman, great to see you today. Thanks for joining us. I want to start with, with a Wall Street Journal op-ed about this issue. The, the op-ed page writes, the Bidens have a right to make a living. But one important question is what Hunter did to earn these payments. The report shows the Biden family profiting from Joe Biden's political power Payments from Chinese nationals are also a familiar way that the Communist Party has tried to compromise America's political class. There's plenty of suspicious smoke worth investigating. My question to you, Congressman, given everything we've learned so far and there's more to come, how compromised do you think the president is because of these deals? First, it's good to be with you. Second, I'll say I think the president is incredibly compromised. Uh, third thing I say before I come back to the president is I think it's disgusting that some of uh, your uh, rivals in media don't even want to talk about this issue when we actually have legitimate receipts, we have bank receipts, we have records, we've gone through all that. They should be covering that. Now, getting back to Joe Biden, I do think he's compromised simply because his brother and his son were engaged with dealings of foreign foreign companies and foreign countries. We have now documented China and Romania, and he knows nothing. All the LLCs that were created, were most of them were created when he was vice president of the United States, and he knows nothing. If he doesn't know anything, he is the dumbest person in the history of the planet and shouldn't be president of the United States. So I believe he does know what's going on. He's been knowing what's going on, and that the brother and the son were able to cut these deals because they had access to Joe Biden, and Joe Biden knew it. Congressman Donalds, can we talk about the sanctity of our federal agencies for a moment? Because as I think about this Comer investigation and John Brennan testifying today and the notion that the CIA was trying to get those signatures to discredit the Hunter Biden laptop story, which now has been verified and we know that the laptop existed. Many people knew back then um, when it was being suppressed, the story was being suppressed on social media. It, it makes me think a lot about that, that Steele dossier that dossier that the FBI based its investigation into former President Trump on as well. And I just sit here and say to myself that the agencies have completely gone AWOL. They just are, are politically motivated, um, you know, and, and are, are, are essentially puppet agencies that are being controlled. When that happens in a country like America, it really represents the breakdown of, of the system. And I, I wonder what you think about that. No, I think you're absolutely right. And this is something where, you know, the Democrats, they ran their last couple campaigns saying that they're fighting for the soul of America. Well, that's frankly a lie, because what they also believe in is actually having weaponized portions of the federal government to basically cover up for some of their malfeasance, uh, some of their corruption, or however you want to say it. Look, let's look at it this way. Everybody remembers Paul Manafort, right? Mm -hmm. What they went and got Paul Manafort on was essentially the same stuff that Hunter Biden has been doing all over the globe. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Paul Manafort was tried and convicted, and the D Department of Justice still can't even say whether they were investigating Hunter Biden or not. This stuff is outrageous, and it stinks. And people see the hypocrisy. Frankly, they're sick of it. We are a nation of laws. We should have one law, and it's got to be for all Americans, not just a, one law for most Americans and a separate law for those who are po politically connected to Joe Biden and the Democrats. I want to switch gears, Congressman, if I may, to talk about the debt ceiling. It was interesting. We heard from former President Donald Trump last night. He had some advice for Republicans when it comes to the debt ceiling. Take a listen. You think the U.S. should default 
if the White House does not agree to the spending cuts, Republicans well, are demanding. you might as well do it now because you'll do it later. Because we have to save this country. Our country is dying. Our country is being destroyed by stupid people, by very stupid people. I think a lot of economists would say, no, default is never a good idea. What do you make of it? Look, I think what the president is talking about is you have an administration and, frankly, a Democrat party that has their head in the sand. We are, they want to spend seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion. That's insane. Mm -hmm. And instead of going to the table, actually coming up with a plan in the Senate and then sitting down and negotiating where we have to make spending reductions, they're saying we don't need to do any of that. Pass a clean debt ceiling. I mean, this stuff is ridiculous. And as a former financial professional, some Somebody who understands what capital markets are looking at, it's not just Congress's ability to raise the debt ceiling, it's also Congress's ability to control its spending over the long term. If we can't do that now, coming out of the pandemic, realizing we don't have to spend at these crazy elevated levels, we can get back to pre-COVID spending. If we can't figure that out, then the country is in serious, serious jeopardy. That is what President Trump is talking about, and it's indicative of the fact that that Chuck Schumer and Senate Democrats haven't even come up with an idea to deal with the debt ceiling. House Republicans have an idea. We've put it on the table. It's time for Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer to get to work. Well said. Congressman, thank you for taking a break from your work to join us here.